Hi, Jam. Thank you for joining the interview. So, do you mind sharing with us your view on um, the current stage of the brick and mortar retailing? Brick and mortar retailing, one of my favorite topics. It's very clear that brick and mortar retailing is going to survive the long term. It is not cl clear how much of re brick and mortar retailing is going to survive. If you look at what's going on right now, in my 50 plus years in retailing, I've never seen a stronger consumer. Three and a half percent unemployment, three percent growth in wages, no likelihood right now of that all changing. So if you talk to a consumer and you say, do you have a job? They say yes. Will you keep your job? They say yes. If I lost my job, could I get another job paying just as much? They say yes. At the highest rate we've ever seen, which means they're very confident. If that's true, why are so many brick and mortar retailers going out of business? This year there's going to be 26, my estimate, brick and mortar retailers go out of business, bankrupt. There's going to be 12,000 stores closed in the U.S. That'll be the biggest year by a factor of two times of any other year in the history of retailing. How can that be if the consumer is so healthy? It can be because almost all of books are online now. Almost all of electronics are online now. 25% of apparel is online now. If that's true, you just don't need as many stores. So we're going to see this real shakeout. And we saw this shakeout before. When Walmart was invented in 1962, by 1982, Walmart had grown from zero dollars of sales to being half of all, every new dollar of sales growth. Amazon is now 20 years old. They're 35 cents of every new dollar of sales growth. That's coming right out of all these brick and mortar stores. So the prognosis for brick and mortar stores is definitely negative unless you're experiential and you're creating some environment that people haven't seen before or at least like a lot, you may stay around, but a lot of them are gonna go away. And if you start from the top down, Lord & Taylor's going away. It's already happening. Saks is probably going away. Neiman's is almost certainly going away. So Nordstrom's gets to stay only because the rest of them around it go away. If you look at Macy's, they get to stay because Bonton, Bazkaz, Belks, Stage Stores, Steinmark, they're all going away. Kohl's gets to stay because Sears and Pennies are going away. So there's only going to be survivors and there's going to be a lot of death in the brick and mortar space. Okay, so now in your view, which sectors in retailing are the most promising or most exciting? There are a few exciting brick and mortar places. No, there's actually more than a few. There's quite a few. Here's the story. If you're an online retailer, if you're an off-price retailer, if you're an off-mall retailer, if you're a resale company like Poshmark, The Real Real, people like that, if you're a rental company like Rent the Runway, or if you're a little local business, those are exciting. Sounds crazy that local business could be exciting, but for the sixth year in a row, local business growth will be bigger than national business growth. Why is that? Because you, when you buy, want to feel like it's just for me, it's environmentally friendly, it's warm and fuzzy, it's touchy-feely, it's I love you, it's that stuff. That's what local feels like. The customer wants that. Why is off-price winning? Because it's been winning for 20 years and still winning, because it's taking share from full price. So there are those sectors I just mentioned, they're winners, but full price on mall retailing is dying. Thank you, thank you for sharing your views in retailing. So my last question for you is that you spoke at the 2017 Barrel Ellis Conference. I did. And now you speak this year again, right? So how did you like it? So why did I come back, right? Yeah. I came back because I think this is such an interesting conference because the speakers, me not included, the speakers group is so strong. Yes. And it's so spread across, the, I want to say diverse, but what I really mean is a lot of different things are covered that you don't hear at most other conferences. So you get a view on investing that's broader and more in depth than you get other places. 
that's really a tribute to how good the panels are. And so I really enjoyed, I've been here since, well, not since, not since the very beginning this morning, but since mid-morning, I've been here for every panel. And it's really, really been strong. In 2017, I literally saw every panel and I felt the same way. Really strong speakers covering a wide range of topics. Thank you for sharing your views. Thank you for the nice comments. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you, Jan. It's a pleasure. Thank you.